Okay, today is May 22nd, 2021, and we're going to do the next update to the Pepper series. So before we go into the update, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Pepper Guru. Here's a shirt by him. So anyway, uh, I just found out after all these years that he actually has a YouTube channel and it's excellent, guys. Uh, go check him out. I'll post a link to uh, the channel. Uh, he does beautiful videos and he traveled the world uh, looking pep for peppers and all that stuff. And his knowledge is just amazing. So check him out. Uh, anyway, let's go into the next update. Okay, here are some peppers that I just took from inside and transplanted into this raised bed. And this week has been really rainy and uh, just wet the whole time. And it's actually a good time to transplant because it will allow your plants to um, get adjusted. Uh, sometimes when you transplant, you may damage the roots and when there's overcast, there's not sun beating down onto the plant and make it wilt and all that stuff. So uh, I usually transplant um, when, it's, when there's overcast and not too crazy hot. So um, it does help the plant uh, a little bit because of that. So anyway, uh, here are some white Thai plants and I know I should not put this many plants in the uh, uh, small s space here, but because I have so many plants, I didn't want to trash them. So I just went ahead and uh, put them sort of like a foot apart, which is a bad idea. The, these plants can grow very big. They do need around two to three feet apart. But anyway, <laughs> I might pull some out and give some away. But here, these are all white ties because I love the KS white tie. Those are the, the plants that I grow every year and at least like five plants. And here is the tie that I bought from Lowe's. Look at this, guys. It is doing really well. Lots of fruits. And because we have so much rain lately, um, I, I don't water these guys very often. The rain takes care of everything. And my uh, habanero that I bought also is not growing very well because the soil is always wet. Do you see how yellow the leaves are? And when you notice this and look at the soil, it's always so wet. So if you see yellow leaves, check the soil. Most of the time it's because it's overwatered. And I have a few over here. Also white tie because I have nowhere else to put it. And you see all of those lettuce plants here? This was the spot where the lettuce were growing. So I shred them up, dig them out, and just use it back as compost or whatever. <laughs> so um, there's one right here. My tobacco plant. These guys are gonna grow massive, so I, I don't know if I should move them or not. But we'll see in the future. There's another tobacco plant there. And I have a few over here as well. And uh, these are orange flames. I have four of them. And again, I should not put them a foot apart. They should be more than a foot apart. I would recommend at least three to four feet apart because Chinen's varieties can grow massive. And then I have the Jay's Peach Goes crossed with a Primo. And uh, I got seeds from Peter Stanley. Uh, Peter is an excellent grower guys. He has some amazing stuff. So uh, most people already know him that grow peppers. But uh, if you have not seen Peter Stainler, I would also post his channel. It's excellent resources for hydroponic peppers and, and many other things. Okay, and here I have a Houston white tie. I got those seeds from Vincent on Pepper Lovers. Vincent is a collector of uh, clusters and Thai varieties. So if you know uh, Vincent, um, check him out. Or if you don't know, check him out. He has all kinds of Thai varieties that are just really rare. And here is the, I think it's a Stargazer, but we'll see. I, I lost the tag and so I, I label it Stargazer. I'm almost sure that is it. And look at this guys. I have, these are Queenie. You see the white pods? Uh, these, uh, usually they don't grow very big, but because um, I grew them in a cup and when I put them out here, they were already fruiting. And so I left it that way. So that's why it's kind of small. And there's another one over there. 
uh, I may do a little trimming, take off the flowers. You see the flowers right there. This thing is like an inch tall. And here I have, this is the sweet Linzo. Guys, these plants are looking horrible because of all of the crazy rain and also because I have a lot of roly poly that keep eating these things. So I'm gonna try to keep those things under control. See, they ate, they ate my star kissed, uh, actually the, the peach uh, pumpkin, they ate the whole plant. So I need to replace it, I have backups. And here, this raised bed uh, is going to be uh, peach star kissed, scarlet rose and I may pull those out in the back and I'm going to put um, a few lemon starburst in there but these guys just got transplanted and I'm gonna show you the the transplant process uh, those that have seen it last year already you already know but those that haven't seen it it may be helpful for you this year so uh, follow along and I have a few uh, small baby ones here. Uh, these are lingerers. These are awesome. I, 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 I actually grew this one in uh, hydroponic inside in a cup, you see. So once uh, it produced the fruits that I need to get seeds, I cut it off and moved it out to here. So uh, that one's going to take off very soon. Okay, and here is the... Uh, chocolate star scream the sweet one crossed with the lingria this is the the larger one and in the last video if you have seen it it was really small and I kind of did some trimming to to remove all of the flowers and stuff like that to to keep it growing and so it's actually picking up right now uh, this one is also picking up but because there's just so much water you see that the leaves are really yellow and I forgot what this one is, but I threw some seeds in this container and it grew. So uh, I'm going to keep it there. This is going to be a container plant. And the cool thing about these containers is uh, you can pick them up and move them around. And also it doesn't grow too big because it's, a, it's, it's not too big of a container. Okay, so here are some of the plants that I transplanted a while back. And again, they have been flooded with rain, so that is why they're not growing very well. Look at all these pods I have for this one here. These are the Lingria. And the, the pods are looking terrible, guys. They should look much better than this. It's just the rain is just causing so much problem. Okay? But I love these because of the stinger and the multiple different colors that it puts out. So when this plant is, is uh, full size and big, you get purple, orange, green, a little bit yellow, and then red all over the place. And on top of that, you get these stingers on all of them, you see? It looks really crazy. I love this variety. So I should do a review very soon. Um, you see, all of these have stingers on them. They're just amazing. And see these hooks right here? <laughs> Very crazy looking. Looks dangerous. And pretty at the same time. Look at that one. You can go fishing with these. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the review may come up in the future. And see there's these some of these um, uh, transplanted, but they, don't, they didn't grow very much. And this is the Poblano. Uh, I'm entering the contest with Chili Chump. Uh, Chili Chump, most people already know who he is. An excellent grower. He does all kinds of stuff like hot sauces and uh, he shows you guys how to do it and all that stuff. His videos are amazing. So if you have not seen his channel, definitely a must. But uh, yeah, he has a Poblano contest. And uh, that's the plant that I'm growing for it. And you may be wondering, what in the world is this thing here? And all it is, is just a uh, mini compost bin where I put uh, like extra vegetables and stuff like that in there to uh, help to have it break down and feed the plant. So that's, that's exactly what it is. And the lid is cool because it keeps things out of it. 
And here again, I have the same thing, you see? I put leaves and the extra vegetables and all that. And here is the larger one. See, these, these, guys, are, these guys are doing great. Look at that. And these are, uh, what are they? Uh, Lingria crossed with white tie. Oh man, these are going to be super cool looking. And let me show you. See that? So uh, all the lettuce and vegetables that I have extra in the, in the garden, I cut them and I shred them up and I put them in here. Put a little bit of soil on top. It does help break down the, the stuff quickly. And the lid is just to keep the bugs out and all that stuff. And it's it's been feeding my plants and it's doing great. Okay, and here are the rest of them that needs to be transplanted. So uh, we have some super pecans that we're going to transplant today. And I'm gonna show you the process I use to separate these without breaking the roots. Uh, it's gonna be the same even for the large containers or even this and those. Uh, basically, we use the same process. So here I have chocolate star scream and the mini ones are the red star scream that are volunteers. So I got a ton of volunteers. I need to pull those out and just maybe trash them or, or something. And again, there's a compost bin in there. See? All these are volunteers. Okay, and this last pot we have a mixture of all different varieties in here that I have extras and man this one is looking great look at all the the, the side shoots that he's putting out I did top this guy because I mentioned that I didn't want it to fruit early it, it put out flower this size so I pinch off the flower or the top of it and then it started to branch out right there and again we have a compost bin you see I put compost in there I just need to put some soil on top and that'll break down. Okay, it's time to transplant. So let's say you have plants grown in a small container, large containers or whatever, cups, and you have a bunch of them and that you need to separate. And I do this every year. So people that have followed along already know how this works. So to separate them without damaging anything, you see how the roots are all tangled up? So if you pull them out like this, you can do that. You can just yank them out like that and you will damage some roots. But if you don't want to damage any of the roots, you take your water hose from the garden, put on your jet spray, and go like that. You see? So then they separate just like that. So spray water as you pull, because if you spray water as you pull, it loosens it up. It's like a comb. Like that, you see? So everything stays intact. So the less roots you damage, the better it is uh, for the plants to get adjusted and start to grow very soon. So that is how you pull them apart. And then the planting process is easy. Just put them into the garden wherever they need to go. Okay, today is May 26th and it has been four days since I transplanted these plants into raised beds. And they're all doing fine. So transplanting during the overcast period or during a little rain uh, will help the plants uh, sort of get adjusted to the condition outside. Uh, if you transplant them during the, the, the days where the sun is beating the, on them, like today, today is 88 degrees Fahrenheit and it's full sun all day. If you do that and when the plants have been inside for all that time and you just automatically put them outside, they're going to burn and they may even die. So be careful. Uh, always uh, take your plants out uh, for like 30 minutes or so and watch them and then take them back inside if you see the plants are starting to droop or the leaves are starting to shrivel up and stuff like that. So don't just take them from inside, outdoors, immediately under full sun. Uh, it's not a good thing to do. <laughs> so anyway, let me show you uh, the plants. These are all the white ties. And um, again, I mentioned I put them too close together because I have nowhere else to put them and I didn't want to trash them. And then here I have a bundle 
that's these are extra just in case a few of them die I, I will have these left so they are all doing fine and here are some other ones that I transplanted you see they're kind of drooping a little bit because today is really hot it's probably the hottest day they have experienced so far since they came from uh, the, the the small pots but those should be okay see they're all doing great and here I have three crosses from Chris Chris, this is yours, buddy. These are the crisscross. <laughs> so uh, I may leave them here or I may transplant them later. And those are a few extras that I have as well. And here are the Houston white tie. I have two of those. And this is uh, the stargazer. And then I have a few really neat variety over here. I have two California reapers and two Jay's peach goes crossed with a primo and then I have this raised bed here my parents bought this but then they uh, they didn't want it anymore so they gave it to me and I'm having this set up right there <laughs> so though that this raised bed is going to have a few varieties of peppers as well and then lastly we have the uh, Thai variety that I bought from Lowe's look at these guys the pods are almost ready so uh, very interesting variety. I don't know what it's going to taste like, so we'll see soon. I don't even know what variety that is. They just call it some kind of Thai variety. But yeah, the, the pods are looking great. There's lots of them. Healthy looking pepper plant. And then I have a habanero. I need to fix these guys. They're not growing at all, so uh, I may have to adjust the soil. Okay, today is May 28th, 2021, and we are going to continue with transplanting more plants in my raised bed. Uh, I have been doing that for the past few days, and uh, I wanted to continue again today because we have overcast, and we're going to expect rain this whole weekend, so it's a good time to transplant. It gives the plant a good chance to recover quickly because this, the sun is not beating down on it when uh, it's actually... Um, gonna be in the sun the whole day so uh, again um, splitting these uh, is very easy if there's just two you can just yank them out and uh, you can damage some roots but if there are more then we're gonna have to use the uh, the water hose method so I'll show you again okay so here is my white tie plant and uh, I have two pretty good size one uh, you should transplant them or separate them sooner than this but because I was being lazy so let's just get them out and see you see when the the roots are like this um, you can damage some root and it's fine so I'll show you I uh, kind of loosen it up split them down the middle it, it's okay uh, to uh, damage the root this side but you kind of don't want to you see how difficult it is to do that so that is why I usually spray them down okay that kind of get them easily separated like that and the less you disturb the roots the better it is for the recovery process so uh, this is another way to do that if you have uh, too many plants in one container okay next we have my Brazilian starfish wow these guys are looking bad because I left it in a pot um, at the bottom there's a container and so it keeps the water in like crazy after all this rain and uh, too much water at the roots for a long period would cause the plant problem so here we have three and uh, it's harder when you have more plants so the the water hose method works best for me
and you kind of hold it like this and just spray it and there you have it okay now that's two and this three this one should already be good so you can just grab the whole thing like this and then uh, put it in the where you need it to go okay so you re when you're ready to transplant what I normally do is I I always remove these bottom leaves here because you really don't want those uh, they're gonna be buried under soil uh, when when the leaves are touching the soil it could also cause bacteria or any other diseases to come onto the plant but also it does uh, invite the roly-polies to come and eat the bottom leaves that are dead and then sometimes they'll climb to the top and also eat the top leaves so uh, try to get rid of all of the bottom leaves and then transplant it to right here that way you have a, a good amount of, uh, of the plant above the soil Okay, so once you're done transplanting, just give it a little spray of water to wash off of the dirt that may be on the plant. And there you have it. That's usually how I transplant my plants. Okay, I have completed transplanting all the plants into the raised beds or into the garden. So let's go around and see what I have. So I have Kangster yellow right here and four of them and then Brazilian starfish there. And I also have four of those. And then that's the Jay's peach gold scorpion, two of those back there. And here I have the California reapers, two of these. And uh, what are those? Uh, Jay's Peach goes crossed with a Primo. Those are awesome. And I have more Brazilian starfish over here. Three. And then the KS White Tie here. And I have two of those in this bed. And these are volunteers. These are Poblano. Actually, this is not a volunteer, but the rest of them are. I think those are all um, Sugar Rush Peach. Like I have a bunch of them. I need to pull out and put somewhere and I think these are probably bell peppers here are the super pekins they're very small right now and some of the lingria crosses here these are also very small and some white tie that are extras so I place them over there and Check out my tobacco one. This is the black mammoth tobacco plant. Uh, just want to show you to my tomato. This is 100,000 and it, it grew out of control and I actually had to cut it down because it was looking bad. So I wanted to shape it a little bit. So I trimmed the entire plant down. This one came from hydro and look at that. The flowers are coming back already. And this is uh, my brandy wine tomato looking good got lots of uh, good tomatoes all up somewhere in there as well okay and lastly I always forget about this guy this one came from my uh, arrow garden and it is starting to drop all of the fruits and flowers because that's usually what happens during transplant from hydro to uh, soil but don't get discouraged. If the plant is looking good, you're doing it right. Uh, it's going to drop flowers, it's going to drop the fruits. And that's just because of the re recovery process. It, it's, it's being stressed. So uh, they will come back and they're gonna come back rigorously. So it's gonna be a, a beautiful plant after. So you see how the leaves are starting to uh, be, uh, kind of change a little bit because the sun 
is beating down on them. And uh, you, usually when you take plants from inside to outside, you have to leave it in the shade uh, for like a week. So this one here has been uh, in the shade for a few days, but we do get the morning sun and sometimes the morning sun can be really hot. So that's why you get like a, a little burn here, but it's, it, you can feel that the texture is good. I mean, the plant is doing well, so uh, it is coming back. So in the next update, you're going to see this plant do really well. So uh, until then, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.